in her own house comes at Summer with a knife, and Summer holds her own <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Right. Who the f are you? Who the f are you? John Dalton can't have anything nice. <laughs> right. Don't no, just calm the f down and have a, a nice breakfast. Isn't? Didn't she say she was gonna go get him some anyway earlier? If you're gonna hire a hooker, would you please let me get you a good one? For John, it's like to have this sort of strange, kind of unexpected kinship in the, in the last place he would expect. You know, someone right. whose ideology seems so kind of diametrically opposed to his own. That's, that's I think, says something about like John's like curiosity and John's like kind what, of compassion. His need to escape, though, also from like what's so familiar. Is there anything to eat that didn't have a heartbeat last week? Uh... What would your conversation at the breakfast table be? Would you lead with, "Hey, I'm vegan." <laughs> Just to make friends. Like, it's amazing. Though, she's ship. so she's so sort of confident in herself. No matter where you're coming from, you have to admire Summer's bravery. Ari's shoes didn't have a heartbeat. Is it non-GMO? I'm not sure what that means. What's very funny is that Gator, if you said to Gator, hey man, I need a gluten-free vegan breakfast, he'd be like, you got it, give me six <laughs> minutes. And he'd bring back the most delicious thing you'd ever eaten. Like Gator can do anything. I can attest to that. The character Gator on the show is like, what? Maybe. Some pancakes. I don't eat gluten. What's gluten? Jimmy, you ready? I think for Jimmy, having his own room is uh, profoundly lonely <laughs> after it's so like much time. the last thing you need. The only sort of solace he has at the sixes is throwing himself into the work. The sort of exhaustion of that is the only thing keeping his mind off of the shame that he feels, the sadness and the heartbreak from, from having to sort of leave Mia. And, and like Ryan and Colby as well. Right, plus you guys Do also. Do you have any bunkhouse camaraderie with those guys? Any like, you know, banter, any fun that you're sort of replacing it? You don't ride too good, but you don't complain about it neither. It's like everybody's working too hard to uh, do these cute little jokes. Oh, so that doesn't sound like much fun. It's not as much fun, but they're, you know, more effective. <laughs> you need to learn rope. Rope's the only tool we got. Roping has been one of these things that we've watched these guys do for years. And then it's been such a journey to, like, try to catch up to the bare minimum to sort of be able to participate. Just to do it once or twice consistently. Yeah, because from the beginning, it felt like a little bit of a challenge to us. You know, like, can you pick up a rope for the first time and can you catch up to these guys who've been doing it their whole lives? Right. And the answer is no. But can you get close enough to be able to fake it, you right. know? Yeah, you can. And there's there's quite a learning curve and it's very steep. But once you get to a certain plateau, it's like, oh, I know how to do this. Yeah. I can yeah. pretty consistently do it. But also, if you put it down for, oh, three days, you fall right off the cliff. cliff and yeah. down for a month or two, yeah. you're just completely starting over. Yeah. And it's just not something you do anywhere in the world around the house normally. Well, especially in Brooklyn. Throw a rope. Yeah, so, yeah. Every time I try to swing a rope in my yeah, apartment in Brooklyn, all the I knock over my roommates. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. She's growing on you. She's not growing on me. <laughs> Okay, she has like a couple of moves and stuff. Okay, let's imagine somewhere down the line, Colby and Teeter maybe move in together. So let's break down some of these household tasks and see who's gonna do what. Teeter or Colby, who does the cooking? Well, obviously Teeter. Dinner's on mouse raid. You talk about cooking a lot. I haven't seen any. I know, you talk a big game. It's like quinoa this, couscous Col that. Colby's really a, a night cooker. He likes to do it when the lights are out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds safe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, see, wait till, the, till it's dark to make everything burn you. That's kind of how he is. Burn you. Um, okay, Teeter and Colby, who's in charge of the laundry? Let's get naked! I think Colby. Colby's really yeah. big on, uh, you know, he likes the certain fabrics. You have the sensitive the, side. You're taking yeah. care of things that sensitive skin. she might not be not care interested about. So who would stock the fridge with beer? Is that, is that also one of your duties? You want some courage? Yeah. No, that's her. I, Colby's not a giant beer drinker. He's like a hard seltzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colby really actually drinks Cab. Oh, yeah, he's, oh, a, big, white he's wine a big, guy. he's a big, no, Cabernet, Sauvignon. That's a red wine. Mm hmm. Who hands out the candy to the trick or treaters uh, on Halloween who make it to the bunkhouse? Hey, you look like a fuck mother chicken. I mean, I have, we haven't been together long enough to really establish what that would be. He's like afraid to commit that they're gonna make it to Halloween. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, once I just... you get into the like the fall holidays, you have to go all the way through. To, I know, because where are you going Valentine's for Christmas? Day. Where are you going for New, New Year's? Year's and Valentine's. So yeah, I understand why this is a tough, yeah, this a tough is sell for you. And I just don't know what that looks like yet. We're not gonna do it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Who takes out the trash? Teeter takes the trash out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who mows the lawn? Probably Teeter. Who chases out the rats living in the attic? 
I didn't know we had an attic. But if we at did... At the top of the barn, where all the cats are. Oh, there's so many cats. Oh, there are a lot of there cats. There are so many cats. Yeah, it's kind of too many. <laughs> Hobie's not really big with rodents. Mm. Yeah, so he doesn't I'd really say... like... It's very dirty. It might be teeter, and then they might end up in a stew. <laughs> Lil some bitch stew. <laughs> it's all the Lil some bitches. No, I'm good. I'm gonna need you to stand up slowly. Jamie goes home to his new ranch, finds Garrett, confronts him with a gun, says, you're under arrest, we're going in right now. And Garrett basically has to talk his way out of it. Jamie is susceptible to a lullaby from a strong figure. And he can come in hot, and he's done it with JD. You called me son, and you made me call you father. If he starts listening, he'll abandon his strength, and because he wants he's, to be told. He wants love so badly. Yeah. And it's like anybody that just tells you, like, you mean something or you're worth something, it's just, he just doesn't know, he just yeah. loses all sense of self. What about right or wrong? There's no such thing. Our introduction to Garrett, we've sort of slowly kind of gotten to know him better and kind of broken just past those first pieces, few layers. Yeah. And then this scene is the scene where it's like, oh, he's also a mastermind. I have no agenda but giving you back the family. And to show that he can do that in like, the highest stakes. Have a gun pointed at you and to be able to disarm somebody, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, you know how to do this. So we had a fight get a little bit out of control, mm. right? We're like, oh, shit, this is really bad. We can, this is going to be hard to cover up. Okay, so then now what? Get my car, bring it around front. In the bunkhouse, it's so confined. Every time something happens, like, the stakes are super high. You know, even smashing a guitar, fragments are going everywhere, and you're like restraining someone like Bori, who's pretty much just like. He's a strong, wiry, not controllable person. Yeah. It was interesting for me. Lloyd when Rip came in and like hit him and threw him over a table. <laughs> That, like, didn't resonate with him. It's this series of escalations, breaking that guitar. Right. That guitar is, like, such a part of Walker's identity. Maybe Lloyd feels in his own weird way, like, I'm doing a favor for Rip. There ain't nobody that wants that son of a bitch dead more than me. And I think exactly, because I think they both, Rip and Lloyd, have both hated, hated Walker, Walker, right? And Lloyd is also living with him still. And don't forget, Rip was fully ready to kill Walker out in the forest. That guy's run out of nine lives as far as I'm concerned. What is that about? Just cowboy shit, baby. Lloyd Walker, this shit ends here. You fight, you break the rules, we have to go to the arena. It's, it's like a gladiator it's like, version. Yeah, and... Fight fair till one guy loses. And that's Casey and Rip, like, that's like, clearly that was their thing. With this one, you're just kind of like, what is, what are we going to accomplish with this? You know, because... It was almost inhumane. It was. This was like... You really didn't even want to watch it. It's like, let's not do this Yeah, anymore. we don't want this. It's like, because it's sad. Thank God. So let's imagine that, that, you know, cowboy brawling in the bunkhouse becomes a, a new video game trend. <laughs> cowboy fatality! I'm just going to start out. Walker's fatality. He sort of hits you. You're kind of dazed. He takes out his guitar. And plays it, strings it. He plays it. an incredibly sad yeah, song. And you, and you sort of, you, your whole life kind of flashes before your eyes, and it's sort of an emotional, like he's taking you down Yo, this absolutely. journey. And his band comes in, like a bunch of, you know, a bunch of other people come in, and then it plays you out. Or maybe at the end, he just gets ever so close, and he takes a string off the guitar, leans in for a little kiss, and Garrett Wire. And just get out. That would be like his second night. finisher. I think if it was Lloyd's finisher. I think it involves a bucking horse, because he's an old bronc rider. So I think it's like he gets you and puts you on a bucking horse. I and like you that. Get, you get bucked to we'll call it the bow legged yeah. buck. The bow legged buck is his. The bow, that's his finisher. Fatality. Yeah, or you, like he calf ropes you, at, you know, around your ankles and you can still sock hop. Yeah. At, but then he looses a bull yeah. in to just toss you. I think that's great. Cowboy poker. What would Ryan's be? I feel like I just pull my boot off and just like 
whack you with the heel and the do like a little dance. Yeah, it's foundational to Ryan that he's both a livestock agent and in the bunkhouse. So there could be like he calls in backup. It's like a, a you see tanks and helicopters. You see lights. Yeah, yeah and the lasers and all over yeah. the place. I like that. Teeters is she's she's cooked up a pot like a big stew of something deeply foul. Well, dunks your head in it and then you like boil choke. Oh, sure. That would be big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Colby stew. would kill with a toothpick. Oh yeah, Super or carved, close. Yeah, the wooden carving. carving. Thing. Jimmy runs away. <laughs> Fight or flight. Flight. Rips. Uh, he could have the the finishing brand where it just doesn't stop. stop. It goes all, oh, all, the, all the way through, through. all the way through. Really all the Beth like, will like I, your dad. Right. You know what I mean? Like Beth makes a phone call. What's up? I'm your new mom. Right. She starts with the child and just destroys the child that, from the inside. I'm your new mom, and I uh, I'm on the mortgage to your house now, and you don't have a house. Is that all it takes to shake you? You're fired.